Hi everyone and welcome to the first game of Ancestry True or False. Um, for those of you I haven't met, my name is Maddie and I'm one of the marketing managers for Australia and New Zealand. So welcome, lovely to have you here. Um, Ancestry True or False will hopefully be insightful for you all and maybe do a little bit of myth busting along the way. So if you'd like to play, this is how it's going to work. Um, I'll read out a common question or statement that we get here at Ancestry. I'll give you a couple of seconds to decide whether it's true or false. So maybe have a pen or paper with you and you can write down your answer and keep a tally of how you're going. Um, I'll give you the answer straight away so you'll know whether you're right or wrong and stick around to the end and I'll give you a grade on where you are in your family history journey. So that, that's pretty much it. Uh, this is our first time trying something like this, so hope you enjoy. Um, otherwise, get your pen or paper ready and let's go. Okay, so first statement. Family history is boring. The answer is false. Sure. We all admit it, uh, names and dates can be a little bit dry, but family history is actually all about storytelling. It's literally how you use the records you find to craft the stories that you tell. So think of yourself as a detective looking for evidence about how your ancestors lived. Statement two, ancestry is used to trace your family tree and break down your ethnicity. The answer is true, but not only this, how do you think that Ancestry unveils hidden treasures in our collections that aren't necessarily in our family trees? We remain really curious. Why don't you explore collections by searching the card catalog? The AU Ancestry team found a one of a kind record in the Irish Petty Court Session Register by searching the word fairy. Why don't you give that a go and see what you can find? Statement three, a friend and I share the same surname. That means we're related somewhere down the line. The answer is false. Well, probably false. It's kind of a maybe, but let's say false for today. If you don't find a direct connection in your family or through ancestry DNA, you're probably not related or at least recently. Look at Nicole Kidman, for example. Many people assume she's related to Sydney Kidman, a great Australian pastoralist. She actually descended from a different branch of Kidman's. So maybe you're connected in the distant past, but you need to do the work to be sure. And we haven't found a connection yet. Statement four, finding an occupation is really difficult. The answer is false. Yes, the occupation records might be a little bit sparse, but don't assume that finding an occupation is too hard. In Australia and New Zealand, we have collections of electoral roles, which are fantastic for this, which often include an occupation in them, and same with marriage and death records, so give them a shot. Okay, statement five. I was born here, so were my parents and my grandparents, so my whole family is Australian. The answer is false. Well, not necessarily. This is where our immigration records and convict and settler collections really come into play. Sure, your family's been here for generations and how lucky are they, but how do they come to get here in the first place? Even iconic Australians have connections elsewhere. So Shane Warne, he has German ancestry and Hugh Jackman is part Turkish. So you can't assume. Okay. Number six, family history is more for baby boomers and above. The answer here is false. How old do you think I am? I'm the family historian in my family. So instead of my uncle, aunt or grandparents trying to get me interested in my ancestral history, I'm the one doing the searching, the talking and the texting. So advocates come in all shapes and sizes. 
Statement seven. All I have is a photo of an ancestor. Even though it might not be online, it will help me with my research. The answer is true. Our photographs are extremely valuable and can hold many clues. So look for details such as clothing, uniforms, pins, hair, as well as any background hints that point to a location. Even the name of the photography studio can help sometimes. Statement eight. If I can't find their surname, they're definitely not in the records. The answer here is false. You say potato, I say potato. Throughout history, many records were taken from spoken word, which means phonetically in many cases. So is your last name Smith? Well, in the records, it might be Smith if someone had an accent, or perhaps it has spelt with an E on the end. On Ancestry, you can search phonetically, which can be really helpful for finding that elusive ancestor that seems determined to stay a little bit hidden. Okay, get ready for number nine. You don't have to know much about your ancestors to start family history. The answer is true, that is right. So even if you don't have a wealth of information ready to organize your family tree, you can start by building a real simple tree on Ancestry. Hints will be generated automatically off the detail you did put into your family tree and suggest for you some records to explore. Okay, last one. Ancestry hints are records or other people's family trees that may contain information about people in your family tree. The answer is true. But keep your investigator's hat on. These are potential ancestors and not a given. Some people might have added this member to their tree without checking the basic facts first themselves. So maybe cross check it with the birth, marriage and death if there has been one and make sure that Uncle Brian is the right Uncle Brian. And that's it for our questions. Um, so tally up what you got, count up what your score is, and I'll just reveal now what your grade is. So if you scored a zero to three, it's pretty confirmed that you're right at the start of your family history journey. But that's, that's cool, like that's super exciting. There is a great road ahead of you and heaps of resources available for you on Ancestry and on our Facebook page. If you scored four to six, you're not as junior as you thought. So congratulations for being well in your journey to discover your family history. And now time for the people that scored seven or above. Give yourself a big pat on the back. You're well on your family history journey and you're probably actually pretty equipped to start helping others on their family history journey. So maybe if you comment your score below, if you're a seven and above and you see someone who scored a zero to three, why don't you connect, reach out and maybe message each other through Ancestry or have a conversation in our comments below. But that, that rounds up the, uh, the game. I hope you enjoyed it. We've not done one of these before. So do let us know if you, you liked it or if you have any suggestions and we'll produce another one for you soon. So thank you. Bye.